I covered last week, the new Star Wars show. I do not watch the new Star Wars show. I liked Star Wars when I was a kid, uh, but I'm an adult now. My associate producer, Professor Jacob, is still a kid. I think he's 12 years old. And so he loves Star Wars. And he said, Mr. Knowles, Mr. Knowles, you've got to hear about what they're doing to Star Wars. They're turning it super woke, super lib. He said, episode one of this show involves witches summoning demons to create children without fathers. It's a it's it's a witchcraft lesbian IVF surrogate episode of Star Wars. I said, "Wow, that's really bad, man. That's real left wing." And then Professor Jacob, in a huff and a puff, he tells me, "Michael, episode two somehow got worse, and it it got worse in a different way beyond the lesbian witches doing IVF and surrogacy in Star Wars. Episode two, you saw a little bit more of the weird sex stuff." Uh, You saw the imposition of gender pronouns into the Star Wars universe. What's that? That's Basil. Is he or they uh, with us? Is he or they or they? It's so clunky. It's so on the nose. Could you imagine? Had, Had this occurred in the first... Star Wars. First of all, no one would have any idea what they're talking about. But if if any of them did know that this was about gender ideology, Chewbacca would have just scratched them across the face. Han Solo would have shot whoever said that, just like he shot Greedo. Okay, this would would not be tolerated in the original Star Wars. But now it's super lib and PC and all the rest of it. Okay, that's bad enough. You get this radical gender ideology. But the worst part. As Professor Jacob explained to me, again, I, I don't follow this stuff, but as he explained it to me is they are violating the inner logic of Star Wars. The, the second episode, and really this whole series, has been contradicting previously established aspects of the Star Wars universe blithely because they, they don't even care. The new showrunners are so focused on leftist ideology They don't care if their ideology contradicts the entirety of the Star Wars story. So this is largely in the words of Professor Jacob. I was not going to take the time to watch this nonsense, but I forced him to. He would have done it anyway, and then he explained it to me. If you go back to the first prequel, Phantom Menace with Jar Jar Binks, that takes place in the Star Wars chronology 100 years after this new show, The Acolyte. And there is a scene in which... The two protagonists, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi, report what happened to the Jedi Council. And after hearing this report of these two fighting a Sith, you know, with the red lightsaber, Darth Vader types, uh, a Jedi by the name of Ki Adi Mundi, who has a giant head, he looks like Dan Aykroyd in Coneheads, says the following, quote, impossible the Sith have been extinct for a millennium, and the Jedi all agree. The problem here is that There is a Sith in the Acolyte, which directly contradicts episode one, A Phantom Menace. Why is this a problem? One, because it messes up the timeline of whether the Sith existed or not. It it takes away all of the uh, dramatic stakes of Star Wars episode one. Also, according to the Star Wars chronology, this guy, Ki Adi Mundi, wasn't even born yet. Which may, so in Professor Jacob's words, it, it, the whole thing is thrown askew. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It, also, it makes the, the Jedi a liar or makes him uh, demented, like Joe Biden. You know, I guess there are some political resonances here there, that could be even more drawn out in Star Wars. But regardless, it's dr- driven the fans crazy, including Professor Jacob. Go to freedomforschool.com. The garbage that the libs are pushing in public schools is absolutely horrifying. A huge percentage of today's teachers are graduating from woke universities where Marxist professors teach them that they must go forth and indoctrinate your kids. You need to get your kids out of government-controlled schools and into Freedom Project Academy. FPA has perfected online learning, offering live, on-demand, and homeschool courses for students K-12. through Freedom Project Academy was built on Christian values and the classical curriculum. Students read full books, write in cursive, and study the full scope of history. Right now, you can save 10% on tuition when you enroll at freedomforschool.com. That is freedomforschool.com. 
Check out their fully accredited courses and teachers' preview classes and request a free information packet. Subscribe to their Rumble channel to stay informed on what's happening in America's schools. We as a nation cannot afford to hand over another generation to the libs. Take back your child's freedom at Freedom Project Academy. Enroll at freedomforschool.com. That is freedom, F-O-R, school.com. When asked about this, the, the showrunner for the new Star Wars, The Acolyte, explains that she hired writers who weren't familiar with Star Wars. She said, I just thought it would be good. This is a direct quote. I just thought it would be good to have the perspective of a person that had literally never seen Star Wars until she was in the room. And she said to me, why do you want me in this room? I've never seen Star Wars. I have no idea. I think there's a dog in it, but I don't know anything. Ha ha ha. And I was like, this is the, the showrunner, Leslie Headland. I was like, first of all, you're an incredible writer, but that's why I want you here. I want you to be questioning narrative. I don't want myself, who's a lifelong fan, to be just relying on particular references to create emotional beats. I want those emotional beats to be earned and checked by someone that isn't super familiar with it. So she's trying to couch this by saying, look, well, uh, we're hiring people who don't know anything about Star Wars, but look, I love Star Wars. Yeah, well, if you love Star Wars and you're such a big fan, how come you keep contradicting the whole story? You obviously don't know that much about Star Wars. My 12-year-old associate producer here on The Michael Knowles Show knows a lot more about Star Wars than the showrunner of the new Star Wars show, and certainly more than the writer who's admitting she doesn't know anything about Star Wars. She's never seen a single movie. Why is this a problem? Because I care about Star Wars? No. Because I care about the Disney company? No. This is a problem because it reflects something intrinsic to liberalism, which is the indeterminacy and skepticism that goes along with liberalism. Liberalism... The, the political philosophy, it just says nothing can ever be settled, man. Nothing. It's all kind of socially constructed. It's all just about what you want with your individual will. That's what liberalism comes down to. There's that old line from Robert Frost, which says a liberal is someone who can't take his own side, even in an argument. Okay, uh, liberalism is, is so skeptical. We can never know anything for certain, you know? We can never come to any conclusions and then enforce those conclusions. That would be authoritarian. No, nah, man, it's just kind of, it's whatever we want it to be, man. Society, government, religion, even the human body, even biology, man, can be whatever we want it to be. I know that the founders of liberalism, people like John Locke, did not speak with that kind of hippie modern accent. But the modern liberal ideas come from liberal philosophy. You see the seeds of this kind of skepticism and relativism, subjectivism, even in that early liberal philosophy. And it leads to the idea that, that you could write the, at this point, what is it, 50th installment of a piece of intellectual property like Star Wars, or it's the original trilogy, then the prequel trilogy, then the after trilogy, then the Christmas special, <laughs> then the cartoons, then the this, then the that, then the books, that you could somehow write the, the, the next episode in this beloved franchise without knowing anything about it. The liberal skepticism and indeterminacy excuses a lot of laziness and ignorance and incompetence. And you see that reflected all throughout society. That idea, we don't really need to learn anything. When you learn history in school, you don't need to learn dates and names and stuff. You just need to learn themes. We don't want to teach you what to think, only how to think. Except if you, when you don't teach people what to think, they don't learn how to think either. That was a good clip, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Make sure you subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel and get more of them. We'll see you next time.